you're known for hopping on remixes and murdering the track. When did you decide that murdering remixes would be part of your wheelhouse? And how did you approach those opportunities? Well, I did that by default. When leaders broke up, I was the first one out of the group to have a child. So, um, oh, oh okay. I needed Very to find a way to fit. <laughs> yeah, I was the, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm the, I'm the youngest in the group, the first one to have a child. And I was the one who got kicked out the group. So I had to figure out how to feed my, my son mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. mother of my child and, and take care of myself. So, um, I took advantage of the, the buzz that was, just constantly evolving into this colossal energy for me mm-hmm. from the, the scenario remix. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. When that shit. You rest know, in the, peace the, to Kid Hood. Well, rest in peace to Kid Hood and rest in peace to Fife Dog. Fife Dog, absolutely. Uh, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was just um, a, 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 like the world stopped for me, you know what I'm saying? When that, when, when that remix came out. Well, when the original came out, excuse mm-hmm. me. And then when the remix came out, it just added more gasoline to the flame that was already blazing. But, you know, when I got that opportunity, it was easy to be able to walk into studio sessions and get love and get the warm welcome and embrace from everybody. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. I was doing was, because, you know, what happened initially was I was actually trying to show up to the shows with leaders. And, and you know, when I got kicked out the group, you know, Brown stopped coming. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I remember going to a few gigs with Dinko to do the shows and promoters would be like, we didn't book two thirds of y'all, you know, right. we booked three thirds of y'all, you know, and with your man C. Brown at or with Charlie Brown at. Mm-hmm. So the promoters would turn us away and not give us money and be like, you know, this is a breach of contract. We ain't paid for this shit. Damn. Mm-hmm. This ain't going to work. So that fucked that up. And... I'm just trying to figure out what's the next best option. So what I started to do was call studios and I would call the studios. I was friends with pretty much all of the studios. I was working in all of these shits, just from leader shit to tribe shit and whatever other little light feature work. But I started to really take the features seriously once I had my son. So I had to start soliciting myself. You know what I'm saying? I would call studios. I was cool with all of the receptionists from the studios. I was cool with a lot of the in-house engineers that was working these sessions anyway. Mm-hmm. So I was able to find out who was working in what rooms. So I would go and give me like five, 20 bags of chocolate. You know, this is pre drug <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, only only thing was around was indica skunk cess, uh, tie stick and, and chocolate tie. Right. And, you know, I go get about five bags of chocolate for a hundred dollars, $20 a bag. And I go to the star to get it. And, I go get the slowest brand of cigar. We go get White Owls. White Owls, is, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Philly's, and, cool. Um, Philly's are cool, but they burn much quicker. That's where they burn much quicker. <laughs> That's what so we get the motherfucking White Owls. Yeah. We roll up, and I would pop up to whatever the studios were that had, you know, the groups that I was either a fan of, looked up to, or was already cool with, or they just had shit spanking in the street. So mm-hmm. get there, and I would I would have an L rope rolled up a ready swipe right outside of the door. I would light the shit so that the L was long, it was fresh. <laughs> yes. It around the room. <laughs> Wait for it in the side of the studio. Yeah, I would be able to use that as mm. the excuse to stay in their rooms. Mm. Um, I passed okay. the weed, I'm the door. I act like I might have worked in there the night before. I left some shit in there. I'm coming back to look for it. I don't mean to intrude on nobody's session, but you know, people were still happy to see me because yeah. I was so you know, bust, come, come drag him, pull up, come through. So I come in, pass the weed, and I'm listening to the beat while the weed passing them, going around, saluting everybody. And after this, the, the, the salutes and the meeting and the greeting and everybody and showing the love, I would sit in the corner and just get to scribbling. Mm. Yes. My verses. And, you know, once I felt like I got enough of the verse, I say it back to myself a couple of times. I'm getting myself excited. I do some of my verse to myself not realizing I don't really want nobody to hear what I'm doing, but I'm 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 still doing certain points in my mind loud enough to where other motherfuckers start coming over to me in the corner inquiring what am I coming up with. So now I'm like, all right, you wanna hear this shit, you gotta let me go in the booth. So I get in the booth, I spit the joint, you know, everybody wanted that growl from the dungeon dragon on their record at the yeah. time too. 
You know what I'm saying? A so, lot of dragon babies back then too. Well, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them. Yeah. But, but but it was it was beautiful to see just the the the, the love and the and the excitement and the enthusiasm that MCs had and how they was looking forward to seeing what I was gonna come up with with the wild crazy shit that I would always display in these verses. And you know, I, I would I would make sure that I would only say it if they let me in the booth. So if they didn't let me in, mm-hmm. they could never hit a rhyme. And because then they might take it. And get the recorded in that <laughs> session I would keep the rhyme for another session opportunity for mm. from future. And just make the adjustments to tweak it to go with whatever the next song is that I was getting on. So I come out the booth once I lay the verse. I'm in the control room. Everybody hype over the verse. You spin that shit back three, four times. Now you can't hit a song without the verse. Mm. The next yeah. day, I would leave. I hit the Chris Lighty, my manager. I, you know, rest in peace, Chris. Rest in peace to Chris. And um, we would just, you know, I would have him work out the business and send an invoice. Yeah. I would do three, four times a week. Mm. And it was... Wow. And I was plastering the street with mad features all over the fucking place. Yeah. That shit was leaking. That's a hustler. It was all leading to the momentum that was building for the anticipation for my first solo album. That's right. That's right. What we don't start Look at what we don't start it. This the people party. When opportunity knocking and young nigga move that door. Get it, call me young, go get it. They can't fuck with it, my slow one way. What's the world?